Hi, and welcome back to the channel on the college process. Once again, I'm Ed from Principia Prep, and today we're going to be going over understanding your financial aid award letter. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel and are looking for additional college content, please hit the subscription down below. It will notify you when new videos do come out. As well as if you have any comments or questions on today's video, please also leave them down below in the comment section. We do answer all the questions you guys leave down below in the comment section. As well as for the senior class of 21-22, once again, we are running our initial James Wilson Memorial Scholarship. This is the first year we're doing it. If you want to be eligible for the scholarship, very simple. Down below in the description is the video link. You can watch the video for the James Wilson Memorial Scholarship. It'll explain to you guys how to apply for the scholarship for this year's senior class of 21-22. As well as also in the description down below is our Venmo for the organization, as well as our Buy Us a Coffee. If you want to help support the channel to allow us to keep making these college videos, for you guys out there. And all that being said, let's jump right into today's video, understanding the financial aid award letters. Now, right off the bat, to start off with, you start getting your financial aid award letters roughly around three to four weeks after you guys get accepted to the colleges. So if you've already got accepted, if you're wondering when the award letters will come, it will typically take about three to four weeks. With that being said, to receive a financial aid award letter, you must also obviously fill out the financial aid forms for the award letters to be generated for you guys. So if you guys haven't done the FAFSA form, we do have this video here for the FAFSA form step-by-step -step guide to help you guys fill out the form. Also in the description down below is a link to this video here explaining to you guys how to fill out the FAFSA form step-by-step -step guide to get the FAFSA form in because without the FAFSA form in place and in some cases also the CSS profile in place, the schools will not award you any financial aid award letters. You guys won't be getting any financial aid assistance essentially. So those things have to be handled first before I can start talking about the award letters, obviously, if you haven't done these forms already. Now this video here is explaining the breakdown of what should be on the award letter. I will have another video in about a week or so explaining how to appeal the award letter. So this is not that video. This is just explaining what's on there to give you guys a baseline to understand what should be on there. And then obviously in a week or so when I do the other video, you guys can watch that video to understand how to do an appeal properly. And all that being said, just wanna mention one other thing here. When you guys get accepted, you guys receive this. It's called the acceptance letter up here at the top. The acceptance letter in many cases will have scholarship money. This is not the award letter. Below it, what you see here is what the award letter looks like. Today I'm gonna to be going over two different award letters. One for if you stay in state and one if you leave the state that you reside in. So these two award letters, I'm gonna show you guys the differences between what happens typically if you stay in state, if you are aid eligible versus if you leave the state. And I'm also gonna be explaining on both award letters what you should be looking for, what should be on there, what shouldn't be on there, and things to kind of better explain to you guys for you guys to have a better understanding of how the award letters put together. That being said, let's start right off with the in-state letter here for Drew University, for a student here in the state of New Jersey. Now what you're gonna see here on every award letter, by the way, is it gives you right off the bat the idea of what the cost will be for next year. Now obviously we're using right now award letters from the previous academic year because most students haven't got their award letters yet. But at the top, what you're gonna see is for the next year, for the 22-23 academic year, what your tuition room board costs will be. Basically all the fees and everything else that school is gonna cost your student to go off to for that one year. So you have a good idea of next year, this is the cost we're dealing with. Below that, what you're gonna see is right at the top, the first thing they talk about on the financial aid award letters are the scholarship funding. Now when it comes to scholarships, if you are getting, as this student is getting here, the presidential scholarship, that typically means you're getting the highest scholarship available or the highest scholarship tier available for that school. So there might be more space here to get more scholarship money, but there's no higher specific scholarship than the presidential scholarship in many cases. So if you want to find out, are we getting the maximum scholarship money? Very simple, contact your school's admissions office. Now underneath the scholarship money, as you see from here, it says Drew Grant. So basically the grant is coming from you guys filling out the FAFSA form, and it's a school giving out their own money to your student based on the fact you have financial need. Now obviously here you can see what's free money is coming in from the scholarships and grants just from the institution alone based on having their name in front of it typically. That's kind of a general understanding is if the school's name plus the word grant or the name of school or scholarship, it's coming directly from the college. Underneath that, what you're gonna see here, and the reason I use this award letter and also the reason you're gonna see in the next award letter is these two students have a lot of financial needs. So it shows me, it gives me the ability to show you guys what's out there and what's available. As you can see here, the student received a federal Pell Grant. This is coming directly from the FAFSA form. Once you fill out the FAFSA form, if your student is Pell eligible, it will actually tell you at the end of the FAFSA form on your confirmation screen. Now, if you're unsure if you're Pell eligible or not at home, very simple, go back into your FAFSA form, and if your expected family contribution number, the amount they expect you to be able to pay towards the cost of college, is at $6,000 or below, you are Pell eligible. So you should be receiving a Pell grant from this institution, basically money coming in from the federal government, but utilized by the school to help pay for your cost. 
That being said, underneath that, we have a special award here called the Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, also known as SEOG. Now, when it comes to SEOG, this is money given to students if they have a lot of financial need. But typically, the first asterisk here is the student must be Pell eligible. So if you're not Pell eligible, you're not going to get SEOG. If you are Pell eligible, you are eligible to get SEOG, but it doesn't mean you're going to get it. It's on the school's discretion if they give you additional SEOG money on top of your Pell money. So if you are getting Pell money, one thing I would be doing right off the bat is contacting the school and asking them, are we able to get SEOG from your college? And if we're not, what can we do to get some from you? Because it is based on the school's own discretion, even though it's the federal government's money. So that being said, that is something to consider. And when it comes to SEOG, you're just a little bit over 4,000, the maximum you're gonna get from SEOG. When it comes to SEOG, the most I've ever seen a student get is roughly around $3,000. And all that being said, underneath that, you're gonna see a New Jersey TAG grant. This is coming from you guys filling out the FAFSA form as well as the state form of the state you reside in. Now, the state awards you guys will be getting, like this student's getting one here, will only be given to you if you stay in the state you reside in. It will not follow you if you leave outside the state to go to another college, whether it's public or private, doesn't matter. Once you leave the state you reside in, they're not going to follow you, unfortunately. They only go to the students who stay in state. Same thing happens with Pennsylvania and Florida and every other state that provides state aid for their students going into state colleges at the state they reside in. Now, these state colleges, by the way, can be public or private. It doesn't matter. They just have to be in the state that you reside in. That being said, the state of New Jersey here provides up to a little bit over $13,000 for private colleges. So if you are looking to stay in state, New Jersey, you have a lot of need, and you are Pell eligible, you should more than likely, very likely be getting TAG grants. And once again, the maximum for TAG grants are $13,000. If you're not sure what your eligibility is for your state, obviously check with your state. But almost every state does provide state aid for their students if they stay in the state they reside in if they have financial need. In addition to that, you're going to see at the bottom of this page here, it has federal direct loans. Now, every freshman student going in is going to be eligible for $5,500 of federal direct loans. Typically, $3,500 will be subsidized and $2,000 will be unsubsidized. What that basically means is the $3,500 of the $5,500 loan they're offering you has no interest on it because the government's paying that interest while your student's in school up to six months after they graduate. After that time frame, that's when the interest starts in that loan. The 2000 does not have anyone paying the interest for you. It is growing on itself. You can elect to pay this interest while you're in school, or you can just leave it there just growing on itself. It's really up to you. Now, for it comes to the federal direct loans for freshman students, you guys can elect to take both loans, or you can say, give me the interest-free loan, and I don't want the interest-bearing loan, or you can say no to both loans. It's up to you. But since you fill out the FAFSA form, these are federal entitlements. They must be offered to your student. In addition to that, as you see here, the student has also been offered a work-study program. Most schools will offer your student a work-study program. If you want more insight on the federal direct loans or the work-study program, right here on the side here, we do have two different videos, one on how work-study works, as well as one as how more in-depth on how the federal direct loans work. Both loans, both videos are in the description down below if you want to watch those videos for more insight of how, how the federal direct loans work as well as how work study work. Now, that being said, when it comes to work study, it's basically the easiest job your student will have on campus. Most federal work study students will receive anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 is the most I've ever seen a student receive in a given academic year to be able to work towards. Now, the reason that the work study is combined with the loan portion and put into that section for most every award letter is because of the fact that work study does not come directly off the bill. Work study funds are actually money that a student must work towards, then they get paid typically every week or every two weeks directly to the student. That can be used to help pay for the college, but typically the students just use it for spending money of some sort or the books or laundry, that kind of stuff. It typically does not get used for the tuition cost, but it can be if you want to hold on to that money and then pay for the next semester. And now that was the in-state award letter. Now let's look at a school if you're leaving the state. So we're gonna look at an award letter here from Pace University. And this student is a New Jersey resident, but going to Pace. So obviously they're leaving New Jersey to go to New York. The first thing you see on the award letter is that the student is getting a scholarship. Now obviously the scholarship funding, and you see that has a few scholarships on here, that's coming directly from the admissions office. So if you want to check, is there more money for the honor scholarship or the honor opportunity scholarship, so on and so forth, check with admissions. They'll let you know if there is. And obviously if you're looking to appeal, well, we'll have that video coming out shortly. In addition, this college has done something that a few colleges are now doing. It's called a FAFSA incentive grant, which you see right here for a thousand bucks which is their way, the school's way of enticing students to get the FAFSA form in as early as possible, 
Some schools do this and offer anywhere from 1000 to 1500 special grant if you get the form in early. It's kind of their way of pushing you guys to get the forms in as fast as possible to make their jobs easier rather than waiting until you know, March or April to get award letters done because they're waiting on the FAFSA forms. This is typically a one-year award, so I wouldn't be expecting this every year going forward. And then underneath that, you see the PACE assistance and PACE grants, which basically the money's coming in from your need to go to that college based on you filling out the financial aid forms. Now, PACE only uses the FAFSA form, so PACE only needs the FAFSA form to be filled out for them to give you grant money. So once again, and underneath that, as you will see from any other award letter, you're going to have the federal loans again, as well as the work study program, which this school didn't offer any, but if you didn't get any, you could always ask the financial aid office if we could be... Please be offered a work study, especially if you're getting financial assistance from the college. It typically means that the school can provide you work programs. Now, one thing here that, that you see on this award letter, you didn't see in the other one here, this school here is offering you a direct parent loan, also known as a plus loan. What you'll notice is some schools are going to have on their award letters a plus loan or a parent loan, alternative loan. They have different ways of describing it. What this school is doing is they're not offering you a parent loan, by the way. They're just indicating to you this is the amount they want you to go out and get in a loan. Here, Pace is basically saying that they need you to take out a loan for $38,800 to be able to basically cover the remaining balance that the financial aid doesn't cover. Now, here at the bottom, they have their cost of attendance. You can look at all their costs here. But if you look at all the different awards, what you'll notice is the parent loan they're offering or basically telling you to get is the remaining balance between what they've given you in the remaining aid versus what you need to help pay for the college cost, obviously. So it's their way of saying if you need a loan, if you're looking for more help, this is the amount of loan funding you'll be taking out for next academic year, essentially. So don't think this loan exists, by the way, because it doesn't. It's basically there to give you a guideline of what needs to be done as far as loan amounts for you guys going forward. And all of that being said, if you guys have any questions or any comments, once again, please leave them down below. I do answer all your questions and comments you guys leave on the page here. As well as, once again, if you do enjoy today's video, please leave us a like. It does help the channel. And in addition to all that, once again, we are running the James Russo Memorial Scholarship. If you want to be eligible for the scholarship, very simple. Down below in the description is the video link. You can watch the video for the James Russo Memorial Scholarship. It'll explain to you guys how to apply for the scholarship for this year's senior class of 21-22. As well as also in the description down below is our Venmo for the organization, as well as our Buy as a Coffee, if you want to help support the channel to allow us to keep making these college videos for you guys out there. Also, if you have any questions or comments or anything else pop pops up. Once again, guys, on the screen is our contact information. If you need additional help or you need assistance, all you need to do is basically just shoot us a call or send us a text. That's actually my cell phone number on the screen. As well as if you want to send us an email, that's the organization's email. And other than that, thank you for watching today's video. Once again, I'm Ed from Principia Prep.